Je waarom ben ik nou zo laat? Het is kwart voor zeven. Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tingo Echo voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate van vandaag 2 september 2016. Dit is een bulletin van vrijdag. Uh, we vandaag hebben we een kalmoerse woorden en een SSTV beeld in PD90. Een spectaculaire. Vanavond, vrijdagavond vanaf half elf is er weer de lange uitzending op PI3 UTR met nieuws in het Nederlands en internationaal nieuws in het Engels en het Duits. En vergeet niet om vanavond, vrijdagavond dus ook, om het vanaf 2100 uur te luisteren naar de uitzending van PI4AA. Op dezezelfde repeat de PI2NOS en verder op 145.325 en een frequentie op 40 meter plus of minus QRM. Op PI2NOS en op 40 meter is er de gelegenheid om je na afloop in te melden. This mighty machine sparked a revolution in our use of media. It's a Sony Betamax video cassette recorder from 1979. This monster weighs about 36 pounds. The engineer in me finds it fascinating. There's nothing digital. It's a truly analog machine. All moving pieces and parts. Early adopters of the Betamax used it to record television shows, a revolutionary concept at the time, because prior to the Betamax, you had to watch a show when it was broadcast. It threatened the entertainment industry so much that in 1979, they argued that recording television shows at home infringed on their copyright. It all came to a head in a Supreme Court case, Sony Corporation of America versus Universal City Studios, where five justices allowed home recording. Although Sony won this court battle, they ultimately lost out to a machine that used this size tape. This is a VHS recorder made by Sony's great rival, JVC. Both machines solved the same problem, how to store information compactly on a tape. Here's the brilliant innovation used by both machines. The machine grabs the tape, drags it forward as the silver drum starts to spin rapidly. The drum has two electromagnets called heads arranged on opposite sides of the drum that read the magnetic information on the tape. That rotating head allowed for a compact recorder. In many previous recorders, the magnetic heads didn't move, only the tape. Because there was a limit to how fast the tape could move, it took a lot of tape, about a seven inch reel to record an hour, which meant that a movie would need two seven inch reels inside a cassette. So the rotating heads dramatically reduced the amount of tape needed, reducing the size to where it could be easily held in a cassette. So if the machines are so similar, why did Betamax lose to JVC? Many thought the Betamax machine would win. It had the better image quality and the Betamax is decidedly better built. Compare ejecting a tape on the Betamax to the VHS. First, watch the Betamax. Note how smooth it is. And then watch the VHS. That's abrupt and will wear out the mechanism. Yet, to my engineer's eye, the VHS was the better solution. First, the VHS was lighter than the Betamax, 29 and a half pounds compared to 36 pounds for this Betamax machine. That's a huge difference for a mass manufactured object. It impacts everything from material costs to assembly time to shipping costs. So at the low end of the market, the VHS machines were cheaper than Sony's Betamax. Second, the earliest Betamax tapes played for only one hour, VHS played for two hours, enough time for a movie. The ultimate killer though was the rental market. Well, Betamax focused its ads and energies on time shifting. Their ads featured headlines like watch whatever, whenever. Well, JVC, the maker of the VHS system, created relationships with the nascent video rental industry. When this market grew, VHS dominated in titles. And when you could for a while find both formats, eventually retailers began giving shelf space to the slightly more dominant brand, which then dominated even more. So, the Betamax versus VHS dispels the notion that simply being first to market is the most important issue. It reminds us that technical excellence in one area isn't enough, here the superior picture quality of Betamax, but that all technical aspects matter. For any mass manufactured object, the winner is usually the one that is just good enough. I'm Bill Hammack, the engineer guy. Yeah, come in. Hi. Hi. It's um this one right here. Okay. Ah. Where's the bathroom? Uh, out here to your left. Be right back. All right, good. Now, we've all heard of gases, liquids, and solids, but there's a fourth type of matter. Plasma. 
The University of Illinois and especially its lawyers do not approve of these actions. They wish to note that engaging in such actions can result in injury and even death, in addition to being a criminal activity. They particularly do not approve of the actions that follow. Yeah, hi, Ellen. Cut the power. Yeah, lights back on. Great, thanks. What I want to show you is the inside of a fluorescent tube. Now, unlike a light bulb, a regular incandescent light bulb, there's no wire that runs down the middle and glows. Instead, this was filled with a gas, or it was filled with a gas. And an electrode at the end of the tube, you can see it right here, it's that wire, creates an electrical discharge, which makes a plasma. And the plasma makes the coating inside the bulb glow. Now, you can make a plasma at home. All you need to do is take a grape. So if you do this at home, you could actually light your microwave on fire, you could destroy the microwave, you could light your house on fire, and you could make noxious fumes. So don't. Each half of the grape acts like an electrode, like the ones at the end of the fluorescent tube. An electric discharge between the grapes creates the plasma. How could a thing like that affect our everyday lives? It has a huge impact. Every electronic appliance we have depends on a plasma. For example, the plasma etches the lines that make up the circuits in this board. And plasmas appear in our lives in even more mundane ways. For example, this chip bag is made from mylar. It's a very thin plastic. And to get ink to stick to it, the manufacturers blast it with a plasma, and then the ink readily adheres to the bag. Yeah, come in. It, uh, it fell. Is that my lunch? Yeah, that's your voltmeter, too. Here, have a chip. Deze middags zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald.